All right, I'm going to review a few things. I'm going to actually add to the importance of the internet. I'm going to put information on the interwebs. First of all, my Schrade Priscilla arrived. And I can't deal with stuff that doesn't have a wooden or leather handle, so I actually wrapped mine with some buckskin and then gave it a good coating of Helmsman Spar Urethane Varnish. Oh, look at that thing. And it's not dinged up at all. I haven't batoned it yet, so I haven't scraped the finish off the blade. However, it certainly doesn't look like that Gerber, does it? The nice thing about this is you can lop, and I've been cutting the branches off of poles, hard standing dead stuff, hasn't phased it. So yes, this is a winner. This is such an improvement over that Gerber. I even added some some stylistic leather onto the sheath. I'm, again, I'm not into plastic. I'm not into like rubber handles. So I done fixed it. The second thing that I'm going to review is wood. Yes, you've heard it here first, wood. And this was an obvious thing. I, I should know on this, but sometimes the obvious eludes us. In the teepee last night, overnight survival. And I, I laugh. That reminds me of this video I saw yesterday. Overnight camping in bitter cold. You couldn't see the dude's breath. There was the dusting of snow on the ground. And he wasn't wearing gloves and his hands weren't pink. So I, I doubt that it was bitter cold. Bitter cold is when whew, you see breath and you have to wear gloves. And he didn't wear gloves the entire time. And so how bitter is it? I suppose it's relative. If he lives in Florida and came up into 30 degree weather, they would say it's bitter cold. If you live up here and it's 30 degree weather, you'd say it's time to put on the shorts. But anyway, this is so obvious, but I guess I never had the need to think about it because I've never had fires in a canvas tent before. A potentially flammable kind of a unit. And what do you notice about this piece of black ash? There's no bark on it. I got this from a a standing dead tree that fell. A good source of firewood. No bark. And it does not throw up any sparks. And the reason that it's not throwing up any sparks or embers into the canvas structure of this abode is that there's no bark on it. How was that? I always wondered how what white ash, no, black ash would be um, for a fire. I love it. It burns a long time. It burns well. And it also gives off enough light. The thing lights up like a Japanese lantern at night, which is wonderful. I come out and I just look at it. Just the glow of the fire within. The next thing I'm going to discuss is that you bought your teepee. You took my advice. And you you went into debt with a Craycal yeah, Cray credit card. A PayPal credit card. You decided that there's some things you're going to go in debt for. Musical instrument, a car, and a teepee. I don't regret it at all. But you didn't want to spend the extra money for a liner. Here, I've got to like... <laughs> Do not gobble it, turkeys. They don't like it. But I wound up, I had this, this tarp. Maybe I mentioned it before. It was uh, 14 feet wide by 20 or so feet long. I cut it into three long strips, four foot eight inches wide, and I used that for the liner in here. Now if you were to buy a teepee liner, and they're relatively expensive because they're they're complex little units. They remain taut along the side. It's a nice even spacing between the edge of the teepee and then the liner. But I'm figuring I'm just gonna use that tarp and bunch it up and it works really really well. I'm gonna allow you to visit my teepee and I'm going to show you this cobbled together liner that I made. You may laugh, but it works. And it was free. So here we go. The teepee cam. Look at that highly subjective thing. Now it doesn't have a semi-circular cut, but see I just bunched it. And that works all the way around the perimeter. Shoo. 
And if it works and it's free, it's a good deal. There's some ash and some birch bark to start a fire. And all I did was I just tied the rope around there and then jammed. If there wasn't a grommet, I just jammed my knife through the tarp, whatever, and then tied it to it. And then at the base, rounds. They're just rounds, and that keeps it tight to the ground. My wife is gone, so I grabbed her comforter, one of them. I'm going to grab another one. She's still visiting family. And there we go, the wonder tool and the sage. And now, this is the money shot. You can't do that in a pup tent. Okay, gang. I'm going to close the video down. Oh, in the north, sweetgrass. In the west, sage. In the south, cedar. And then in the east, tobacco. Kind of an unkept fire, but you know, whatever. I'm just going to keep a little one burning. Let's do a little walk around. Now you might say, what's up with having the smoke flaps tied to a post? Well, you don't need to worry about tripping over a stake or the line. Isn't that cool? Let's get kind of a back. I love my teepee. And I was in a, the other night, we had gusts up to 50 miles an hour, and this thing did not rock and roll whatsoever. It was so calm and peaceful in it. And yes, there are a few wrinkles. This is the sixth or seventh time I had put this up, and every time I get better. It's simple, but it's somewhat complex. And they do kind of lean towards the front. Beautiful. Okay, you're released from this formation. Enjoy yourselves and try not to think too much about politics.